Oh. I think I need a new mat. But we went through so much together. I'm, I'm, I don't want to throw it out. <laughs> Sometimes I get very attached to my stuff. That's not healthy. Hello, Bacon. Today we're testing even more sewing gadgets that the internet threw at me. Welcome to Keep Our Gate, where I test sewing things so you don't have to. Mostly because they're expensive and useless. A second store bobbing tower. Cause I'm tired of having my bobbin flying around the room, losing thread everywhere. This doohickey here, it fell apart already. It is supposed to store your bobbins and prevent them from unraveling. And I think you can buy more, stack even more if I wanted to. Fancy. A tower of bobbins. I keep mine in the box that I lost. Oh, this can't be real. And I hate that they unravel and it's all over the place. Sometimes I do not them when I know that I'm I'm not gonna use them that often, but it's kind of annoying as well. See if they will unravel. I hope not. I have high hopes, very high hopes. Ah, where are my bobbins? Why do they always leave me? <gasps> I lost them during that other video, then I found them again, and now I lost them again. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus freaking Christ! <laughs> it was in the drawer that's now on the floor. I hate this drawer. Another reason why I need this. Schnitzel. I hate this. Where? No. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Oh. Oh. I'm all in there. See, it's unraveling. Black. Oh. Haha. -ha. Found a flaw in the system. This bobbin is totally loaded. But putting it here, it's way too big. It might fall off. You can see the thing is struggling to keep it on place. And it's not keeping it from unwinding either. Ah! I guess it's all loaded. It's fine. It's kind of hard to see what kind of thread are in the bobbins with this. As you know, here you have to open and check. Is this black? Is this some dark color? Especially if they are almost empty. I'm disappointed. I'm very disappointed with this. I will keep my in the box until further notice. Doesn't do it for me. It really doesn't. And now I'm sad because it will still be annoying to keep them at bay. I will still have to knot them closed for them not to unravel in the box. Ugh. Me being able to actually see what color is in the bobbin is more important than them not unraveling. Whereas for me to search for the right one, I think it will annoy me after a while. I am not looking forward to that at all. Sorry to disappoint, but this is a yeet. A very sad yeet. This one is all the rage on the internet right now. It's an 505 temporary adhesive. I saw a lot of quilters using this. It's an basting spray instead of base stitching and it's supposed to help you. <sighs> Save some time, but it's a spray adhesive. This will probably stink a lot. And also one of the bacons told me to get this one. So I got it. I'm not gonna lie and say I'm not dreading this one, but it's the last thing I'm doing today here downstairs. So if I stink the room, then it's not that big of a deal. Pieces of fabric. Thick calico with somewhat stretchy cotton poplin, very thin. Thick calico with somewhat stretchy wool. Thick calico on top of thick calico. Uh, le let me put a paper on the table because my poor thing is already destroyed. Perfect of Good children. To clean off large quantities, dry clean. Ooh. Only spray on a very thin layer of adhesive. These adhesive. I'm gonna do this from further away because I don't want the mist of glue to be infecting my camera. Calico, calico. I will spray the calico only and attach the fashion fabric on top. And then we will revert and do the same. Spraying the fabric, fashion fabric and the calico just being as a... Ready to be <coughs> sprayed. Can't smell anything yet? Oh God. Let me take everything that's expensive out of the way. Ooh, you can actually see the glue. <laughs> It smells like you expect chemical glue to smell. Now, wait for it to dry. This video was kindly sponsored by my Patreon. few days. Now I don't remember which one I sprayed first. There is a different spraying. The fashion fabric and 
the lining fabric. This is where I sprayed only the muslin. You can't see any markings. This is where I spray the fashion fabric. Can you see the stains? Don't spray the fashion fabric. Especially if it's thin and delicate like this one. It's still sticky after you peel it. It's not gonna stay forever. It's a very light stickiness. It's very easy to peel off. But I don't like that it stained the fabric. Let's sew this and see if the needle will be sticky. Because if the needle will stick, then I will have a very bad problem. Let's see. It stabilized the fabric very, very well. There was nothing moving around, especially on this one that I tried to make a square, maze, zigzag, whatever, wavy thing. And this one with the curve, everything stayed on place. So yay for sticking to the fabric. Will the needle be sticky? Oh, the needle is not sticky at all. This is very good. I love it. I love it. <coughs> <coughs> just inhaled something. Ew, what is this? This piece of wool was in my lungs. <laughs> I liked it because <clears throat> the fabric didn't move. <clears throat> it's easy to use and the needle isn't sticky. Don't put it directly on the fashion fabric and use it in a very aired... <coughs> Use it in a ventilated area. You know how I feel about particles in the air. I want you to be safe as well. This is a keep for sure. I want to try to make a corset with this because generally I, I lose a lot of time base stitching the fashion fabric to the under bits and the structure. So I hate it. I think this will help a lot. Keep! A slash cutter for straight and curved designs. Well, a cutter pour four chenille. It's also a chenille cutter, but it has a handle and I think it's going to be easier to use as the small one from the other time. This was supposed to cut eight layers, but after four, it was really hard to make it pass through the fabric. I have been using this a lot to cut skirt panels, actually, not for chenille. When you have to cut pieces of fabric of a big batch, Mm. have a small starter gauge and it comes with a long gauge. I think this one is for the curvy. Making curves with this will be a little bit difficult. I'm used to them having the security thing, but it's not necessary since we're cutting. I think the blade will be static because you have numbers here in case you need a new tip for cutting the thing. The entrance is a little bit rough, but the blade is sharp enough for it to cut the way it's supposed to cut. Some of the threads are sticking to the blade already and this is what I I hate it about the small chenille cutter. The blade is static. So I have here on the setting one, you have to open here, release, and then it will snap into place. And then you close it again for a new tip. We have another package of pom-poms. This one came all the way from Berlin from Katarina Zapf. Oh no, he's so cute. Oh, it's a dragon. Two pretty pom-poms. Oh, they're adorable. Thank you so much. This one is going on my wall. And this one came all the way from Brazil. Can you believe it? Oh my god, those are bees! I love it! And there is... Ooh. <laughs> it's a bacon. Look at this face! Thank you so much, Carolina. I love them. It's just the cutest ever! They are oh. tiny bees. How adorable is that? Thank you so much. I love them. <laughs> we have to update our tally here as well. What is today? 21st of February. I have two from Katarina and 12 from Carolina. Mm. Thank you so much for sending the pom-poms. It really means a lot to me. And I think the way things are going, we might even do it. We might finish the dress together. Oof. Where does the pig will go? I need a special place for the pig. That's a place for the pig. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> does it work to cut chenille in curves and in straight lines? Let's find out. To the sewing machine. No. A nice chenille. Five layer stops, both squiggly and straight. <laughs> One straight. Oh, I cut already two. <laughs> Fine with two. Entrance is a little bit tricky. One, two, and three layers. Getting worse. One, two, three, four layers. It cuts. <laughs> it's very finicky. Ah! It's still very weird to make it go through all the way. It always gets stuck. Don't enjoy that. Now, the part to change thing. Running the risk of cutting my finger off. The thing. The blade. The guide is very short, so no problems making curves. 
Ooh, a lot of threads getting stuck to this thing. Oh my God, I put it wrong. E, of course it's not working. <sighs> the blade needs to come here in this slit and I put it over. <gasps> Poor thing. <gasps> what is happening? It doesn't want to go in anymore. Thing, blade in this thing and now this. But it did cut without having the blade in the first, in the, in the right place, so I'm happy about Ooh, that. Why is it cutting curves easier than cutting straight lines? Oh, very smoothly. Like, very smoothly. smoothly. Yeah. Just because I said that, ugh. I don't like this. It's very awkward to hold. With this one, I, at least I have the possibility of pulling instead of pushing. And with this one, it will be a very awkward way of holding. Although this is very annoying, I think this one is better than this. So this is a yeet. Taco liner pen style. A chalk marker in pen form. The tapered point for easy marking. Or so they allege. I got a blue one because, well, it's blue. The point is very, very small and delicate. This will be very good. I think the chalk deposit will be very delicate and will not overload the fabric, which generally happens with the normal big ones. Can you see the difference? This is huge, this is mid, and this is very small. The only reason I don't use these very often is because it's a lot of chalk that comes out of them. When there is chalk coming out of them at all. Very stable line. This one requires a little bit more strength to move the thingy and it deposits more chalk even than the bigger one. This is very small. However, there was a lot of force involved here. You can actually see how it moves the fabric, putting a lot of force to make it turn. Ooh. When you're marking a seam allowance, this is not good if the fabric goes dancing around. This is very hard to use. Compare with this one. This, I just put it on the fabric and pull. Nothing happens and there is a nice chalk deposit. This one also requires almost no strength at all. And there's a nice chalk deposit. And this one, if I don't press it, it doesn't turn. Nothing comes out. Ugh. This is pretty, but it's very shitty. Yeet! Water erasable pencil. How water erasable are they? To wipe the marking off, place a dry towel or cloth underneath your project. Wet a cloth or towel and rub it carefully to wipe off the marking. You don't have to wash it, but I'm kind of skeptical. There are oils in the color thingy. It will be very hard to take off only by scrubbing it off. Let's see. Clay wax pigment mm -hmm. in the core. Here we have blue. It's a very soft core, but it's very waxy. This is 100% cotton. This is 100% polyester. I don't have to put any pressure on the pencil to make it mark, which is nice because the other marking pencil I have, you have to really go for it. Dampen a towel and put it underneath the fabric. And with another piece of fabric, you scrub it. Oh, oh my God, it's all gone. And that was really, really easy. What about you two? Definitely harder to take. And I still can see some colorful shadows here. Let's dry and check it later. Because we are in the water erasable things. This is the water erasable marker. The marking disappears with water. The markings can be quickly removed with water. Is this really just spray the water and the water will remove it. Depending on fabric, residual markings may remain after drying. Remove marking as soon as possible. Markings left on more than two weeks may be difficult to remove. Do not use detergent, bleach or solvent. Water or clover eraser pans. Very interesting nib, huh? Weird. Air erasable ink means you will draw with it and after a few days it will fade. There's a warning for cancer on the back. Oh my god! What the hell is this? This is due to the California laws and I understand some Sometimes they are a little bit uh, strict, but it's not nice. Such a warning in a thing you're about to use. On one side, it's the air erasable pink color and the other side is the eraser pen. <laughs> Let this be with air. And this one I will erase now with the eraser. Oh, ooh, this is magic. Look at that. It's erasing. <gasps> The ink is gone. The ink is gone. I want to see if this will disappear as it, they said it would. This is the air test. It totally disappeared. There is no trace of the writing whatsoever. So we work. This is the water erasable marker that supposedly also will be erasable with the eraser, eraser pants. It's a very sweet tone. 
of blue. The nib is very, very dry. Eraser pen. Ooh, it also works with the eraser pen. The ink is gone. You can see a little bit of the tracing, but I think it's because erasing fluid is still wet. So let's wait to see how that will go. And where's the other package that I got that I brought downstairs and that I lost because there was another pen. And this is the eraser pen. Only the eraser pen. No warnings on this one, but if this one had a warning, then I don't think this will be different. It's thicker than the one attached to the pink pen. It makes it easier to erase, I'm not gonna lie. And this is supposed to be erased with water. Will the water erase it automatically? <gasps> it is erasing it automatically. Look, it's disappearing. Oh my god, there's no need to wash it. It's all gone. Ooh. Ooh, I like this. Let's try this again. Just dampening my finger in water and tapping on top of the line and the thing is disappearing. Oh, you can see the lines where I erased it before. So the eraser fluid does not really influence. You can't paint on it again. Will the pink one also disappear with water? Oh. It also disappears with water. Nice. So it's not just air erasable, it's water erasable as well. Fun. I was curious to see any of these will disappear with heat. No steam, just heat. All of them are still here. This one changed color dramatically. <laughs> now with steam, also no change. Only water or air. All of them came off the same way even after heat pressing. However, pencil still leaves a little bit of a trace. For me, it means that it will stain fabric potentially, so that's not a good thing at all. The pencils are yeet. These two water erasable and air erasable ones are a keep. I love them. And the eraser pen is also a keep because they work. Oh, pencil with the eraser pen. A little curious. It does not work. This is a quick cut thread cutter that you just put on your table and use to cut thread. Also more for quilters and people who sew chain stuff. Sometimes I do sew chain stuff like ruffles and other things. They could, this could help me. You just change the positioning of the blade for when the blade is dull. So turn this lever here and you get a new piece of blade on the top for cutting. Why can I open this on the bottom? Oh, maybe to change the blade. <laughs> it's cute, but it's kind of ridiculous if you think about it because, well, will this help me Streamline. There is just one way of figuring this out. To the sewing machine. Same sewn. Look how cute. Had those tiny little party flags. Where is the thing? I lost it. What? I just had this it in my hand. And it's cut. This. Ta-da. Yeah. Well, it does what it's supposed to do. But is this really necessary? Be a quilter person would have a lot of fun with this and this will help them a lot. But for me, the amount of chain sewing that I need to do is not that big. For me, it's a very cautious keep if you have a use for it. I hate one trick ponies and this is a very specific one trick pony. I don't know if it's worth your money. It's not cheap. So unless you're sewing thousands of meters of something in chain, nah, don't recommend. Yeet! Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Ta-ta!